Hello, this is Jess from Phoenix Coaching and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about breathing technique and its importance within the system. So breathing is massive for its influence on the body. Uh, you know, oxygen is our most important nutrient that we have. Without it, we'll be in trouble pretty quickly. So getting enough breath into the system and breathing optimally is like really paramount to our health. It's, it's one of the six foundation principles of health. So the vast majority of people uh, aren't actually breathing correctly and they're breathing in a dysfunctional way into the chest. So I'm going to give you some tips of how you can start changing your breathing pattern to come more into the abdomen, um, which your body will massively thank you for, um, for reasons that we will discuss. Um, so most so the first thing about breathing to consider is that you do it thousands upon thousands of times per day. So um, say if uh, anything you do thousands of times a day, whether it's steps or whether it's a breathing technique or, or, or what have you, eventually has a big effect within, within the system on our posture as well as the well-being of the organs. So they say that every breath is like a hug to the organs. So when we are breathing correctly and diaphragmatically into the, into the belly, it's very good for the health of the organs and it also kind of pumps the spinal cord, but also pumps the entire body. So this can help our digestion, helps move toxins throughout the system and various other um, positive things that we want within the system. So um, we need to consider is that most people breathe into their chest like this. So if you've ever seen anyone having a panic attack, then you'll see that they're <gasps> all up here. And the first thing that someone tells them to do when they're in a panic attack is breathe, breathe, breathe. <sighs> you like to bring yourself down. This is because the breathing has a very powerful effect on the nervous system. So there are two branches to the nervous system. There's the fight or flight branch, and then there's the rest and digest branch. Fight or flight is called sympathetic. Rest and digest is called parasympathetic. So most people are running around with their stressful lives permanently in a fight or flight state, which this over time has an adverse effect on the system. So um, basically the system is always jacked up, always running too hot, too fast. So uh, this eventually can lead to health problems. So one of the fastest, most effective ways to affect this is through the breath. Now, the important thing to know about chest breathing is when you are chest breathing up here, you're actually keeping yourself in a really low level stressed response, a stressed state, which over time, we're talking like years, can really, really have some large effects within the system. So, uh, there's effects on the system in terms of the it running too fast, the adrenal glands, but also will have an effect on the posture. Because if we're picking up here thousands of times a day, what this eventually trains us into is this kind of thing. Then the chest is actually closed down, making it even more difficult to breathe. So, um, so what, what we want to do is one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest, and you're looking to expand the belly before the chest. So imagine there's like a balloon in your belly, and you're inflating that balloon by pushing the belly button out. So ideally, you're looking to feel the belly rise first before the chest, if at all, in the chest. So you may feel the chest rise in the last portion of the breath. Now most people, they'll kind of be all up here and may find that difficult. So some people will just get this, other people might find it a little bit more challenging. So if you find this challenging, set up, then what you can do is you can lie down and get a bottle of water. I'm going to use my phone. Uh, you just want a, a weight um, that is enough to create a stimulus on, on the, on the um, uh, belly muscle. Uh, and then forget about breathing, just push the weight up. 
with the belly. Now what's happening is I'm inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. Okay. Now, this does new, numerous things within the system. So, we're now using 100% of our lung capacity. So, um, this will enable us to not have to breathe so much. Um, which has a positive effect on the system, um, as well as get more oxygen into the system, which is like great if you're um, a human being, um, but also extra great if you're a human being who likes to exercise, particularly like do cardiovascular exercise, like running, cycling, uh, swimming. Um, so when we use 100% of our lung capacity, system's a lot more efficient. We need less oxygen, so this translates into running faster for longer. It's also really instrumental to the posture because, again, when we move into the chest, this thing happens over time. When we move into the belly, we're also using the core muscle. So the core muscle is like the bridge from the lower body to the upper body. So this helps us keep this nice posture which over the course of a race enables the correct biomechanical um, uh, firing of the system, which translates to more efficient movement, which again translates to faster times, um, more efficient uh, body, um, that over a long period of time, if you're an endurance athlete, uh, helps you to save a hell of a lot of energy. Um, from a pain perspective, particularly back pain, so a lot of back pain, if we're now using the core muscle thousands of times a day, which is what the breathing is, and we go from thousands of times with the shoulders causing this to thousands of times in the core, this like low level activation pumps your organs, keeps the core active. The core keeps the back protected and strong. So you can find over time that the core, uh, the breathing into the belly will actually strengthen the core and can help with things like back pain. So then there are more advanced breathing techniques that you can use to actively strengthen the core, but it's really important just to get this initial belly movement um, dialed into the system. Um, there is a further breathing technique after that where you start to learn the obliques. So rather than just breathing into the belly, you breathe in like a 360 degree manner. So you breathe into the back as well as breathing to the sides. Um, but if you're new to the breathing, uh, new to breathing, <laughs> new to breathing diaphragmatically, because hopefully, um, well, if you're new to breathing, you probably wouldn't understand this video because <laughs> uh, you'd be quite small. Um, but um, if you're new to breathing diaphragmatically, just get the belly movement first, and then there are more advanced breathing techniques. Um, usually, uh, I take my clients through these because there can be a little bit to it in terms of. Uh, getting the correct what we call occlusion of the diaphragm uh, as well as sometimes a restricted diaphragm uh, can prevent um, the breathing technique being as efficient so then um, you can talk to a manual therapist such as myself in terms of looking at releasing the diaphragm and therefore the breathing technique. So a final point on this is that um, when you are looking to change your breathing technique you need to be quite conscious of what's happening within the system. So, um, because what will happen is after this video, you'll be like really super conscious of your breath. It'll be in your mind, you'll be in the belly, no problem. But then um, the second something happens or you think of something else, you'll more than likely revert back to the shoulders because it's the pre-programmed um, response of the system. So it took me about two weeks to come from a chest breather to a diaphragmatic breather. Um, so what you can do is set an alarm on your phone on the hour each hour to remind you to do 10 deep belly breaths and then it's, it's, a, it's an exercise of catching yourself when you're in the shoulders. So really, really great awareness training um, for becoming aware of the body. And it's through the breath. The breath is one of the best ways to cultivate awareness of what is happening in the system as well as awareness all around us because the breath is the foundation of um, virtually all meditative practices. It's also the foundation of what we do in terms of exercise. 
So when you're breathing efficiently and effectively, you're going to become more mindful generally, as well as increase your gym performance and um, over time your life. So there's an old, um, I think it's Hindu proverb that, um, or saying that uh, every single person has a finite certain number of breaths, um, then they, they die. So if you can breathe more efficiently, then if the proverb holds weight, then you'll actually add years onto your life. Now the science behind that is that when the body comes into contact or when anything comes into contact with oxygen, it oxidizes. This is the same process that causes metal to rust or fruit to rot. So this process of oxidization ages the body. So if we can learn to breathe more efficiently, we can slow the aging process. Um, so hope this video has been uh, helpful. Um, if you wanted to book a breathing assessment or get any one-to-one -one tuition with your breathing technique, then you can contact me uh, via the website and I'd be more than happy to talk about um, how you can do that and optimize your breath, breathing for work, life, mindfulness, and within your exercise and gym performance. So thanks for listening and see you soon.